because by the end of the presentation, um, I'm going to do a little game, right? It's called Kahoot, where I'm going to ask you um, several questions. And, and I'm going to ask you 10 questions, and, and then you're going to have to answer from your phone. So I'm going to send you a QR code. You're going to answer from your phone, and it's going to rank you depending on how right is the question and how fast you answer the question. So at the end, it's going to give us a podium, and the first one or the winner is going to get a uh, a gift certificate from Daikin. All right, so uh, let me just uh, start the presentation. I have a little video that I want to show you, and it gives us time for others to connect. All right, so here we go. Before we go into uh, the product, I want to create a little conscience about the increment of energy consumption globally. And this slide here um, basically show you uh, different countries, right? Um, on the bottom, on the horizontal, you're going to see the years, and on the vertical, you're going to see the tons watts per hour. As you can see, uh, the developed countries like China, they keep increasing consumption of energy, right? And countries as United States and, and Latin America, they, they increase, but not as big as, as, as the Chinese uh, uh, people, right? And, and, and that only makes sense. They're, they keep growing, right? They're, they have too many people, and uh, well, they, they demand more energy, right? So, but what are these countries doing? And I don't know if you guys may see this in your countries, but here in the United States, I see these uh, charging stations everywhere, like in parking lots or in... Uh, commercials or, or sometimes in the mall, right? And some people give some benefit uh, that these charging stations are sometimes free, right? So that's something that, that they're doing. I've seen this also, uh, like I say, outside a mall and, and they try to uh, motivate people to go into more into the electrical cars, right? Now, China has more than 5,000 electric boxes running, right? And uh, this is in just in addition to all the politics that they have to reduce uh, the consumption of energy. And they are building more. They have 304 new buses added every day, right? So that means there is 124,000 a year, right? But what is this doing? Or what are these uh, energy consumption affecting? And it's basically, it's affecting the, the carbon footprint. It's increasing, right? And what does that mean? It means that we are, um, wasting our natural resources basically right so eventually uh, we're not gonna have a a planet red generation so we don't do anything about it right so and this other slide show you uh the emissions the uh, co2 per capita that means that every person or per person this is what basically what they're spending right now a little bit more about the vehicle industry uh, every car that is powered by gasoline is producing 11,000 pounds of CO2, right? That's uh, that's not good. Uh, now, you got 6.5 pounds of uh, nitrogen oxides and 0.4 pounds of uh, particles that are 2.5 microns or, or bigger, right? 
Now, what the, what the tendency is, is doing is that we are moving or we are starting to see more cars uh, being an electric car, right? But those cars are still powered by, you know, coal or nuclear gas, nuclear plants or winds or gas electric. So we are still producing CO2 is way less than the gasoline, as you can see, right? But we are still consuming. What it's planning to do in the future is be uh, charged completely with renewables, right? You, you got those the uh, eolithic turbines or solar panels. So the, the production of CO2 will be zero, right? So at least uh, they're, they're, the, the, the technology is helping us a, a little bit, but the, we are not at that level. That was for the um, vehicle in the industry, right? This is more related to us, that we are in the air condition in the, in the HVAC industry. As you can see in this picture, and it's probably not a good reference to, to your countries or, or where you guys located, because this is, I think this is Chicago. But what I want to show you here is that we can find many, many buildings, right, on different sizes, right? And most of the buildings that are large sizes, they use a BMS system, I, um, right? A building uh, management can, system. Yeah, we well, need, you need mute something. Your, your, your microphone? Thank you. So most of the BM, BMS system, building management systems, are only for large buildings, like these large buildings. But as you can see, you have smaller buildings here that the tendency is not to use any centralized controller. So this is like a canvas for us. This is a potential market where we can offer a centralized controller. So uh, most of the buildings do not uh, consider a centralized um, control it only for those large buildings, right? Um, why is that? Because they consider that this is very complex, that they're very difficult to install, that they're very difficult to um, program. They probably, they consider that they, by they, I mean the end user, uh, consider that they're going to need somebody dedicated for this, and, and they also think that they is very expensive. And the, the reality is that it's, it's true, right? Uh, the BMS system, which can be very complex, uh, are also very expensive, right? But what I'm going to try to focus is on the small and medium-sized buildings, right? And there are more small, medium-sized buildings than larger buildings. That's why I say this is our canvas where we can work. So if you have a chance to reach these end users and convince them and show them the benefits of a centralized controller, we'll be able to uh, get a lot of projects. Just to give you an idea, the solution that I'm going to offer you today is going to be about one fifth of the cost of the BMS system, right? Hey. And uh, this solution is scalable. That means I can do a small office or I can do a larger building, right? And I'm only going to charge you for whatever you need. And you also, by having a centralized controller, you'll be able to save 30% in the consumption of energy of that building because we can integrate lightings, we can integrate locks, door locks, or, or curtain rollers, um, you name it. There, there's many uh, smart devices that we can integrate. So if we have that opportunity to reach the end user and explain to them uh, the benefits of a centralized controller, uh, and, and it could be any really centralized controller, it could be competitors, but if you have a centralized control in a building and you limit just the schedule, you know, you make a schedule for the indoor units, you will be saving 30% on the consumption of energy, right? And this is what this graph is telling you. This is the total consumption of energy on a building. And as you can see, you have lighting, you have other utilities, but we are mostly concerned about their conditioning. As you can see, is 40%. And inside that 40%, we have, you know, compressor fans, and, and there is a lot of development or, or a lot of technology going into this. We like, like we have uh, inverted compressors, we have uh, uh, heat exchangers that, that are four sizes, et cetera. But our main concern is to reduce this consumption of energy of the indoor units. And by that, we use a centralized controller that is gonna be able to manage those indoor units. And at the same time, integrated with lining, with uh, sanitation, elevators, et cetera, other electrical devices that you have in there, right? So the electricity uses must be managed right, in order to be able to reduce the consumption of energy. If we don't do that, what's going to happen is that all of these 
clocks are going to be spinning like crazy and the building is going to keep com consuming and consuming and consuming and we are not apporting or doing anything to the future of our, our generations, right? So right now, now what I want to introduce to you is that new solution, right, that we call Ready. And what Ready means is that it's a, it's a Japanese word uh, and it means uh, smart, intelligent, ingenuity, clever, I mean, you name it. They, it has uh, all of the synonyms of or smart and it's mostly dedicated for small buildings and medium sized buildings, right? So you can monitor uh, remotely, like I said at the beginning, you can do it from your cell phone or you can do it from your tablet. It's, it's scalable, it's easy to install, very easy to install, uh, it's easy to program. Um, I mean, it's, it's nowadays uh, software developments are, are making things, things so easy that, that even a kid can do it, right? It's not, I'm not saying that a kid is going to be able to do this, but it's that easy, okay? So you can control it from your cell phone, from, your, from, from a tablet, be inside the building on Wi-Fi or being outside via internet, right? It's one fit the cost of a regular BMS, right? Remember, BMS are, are usually uh, offer for these large buildings, small buildings and medium-sized buildings, usually you don't have any solution, right? And remember, the best important thing is that you're going to save 30%. That means that the control is going to pay by, right? So, and you're going to be saving 30% on energy consumption, all right? So let's go into the product now. And uh, we have very uh, defined segments for uh, the ready control. We have the ready office. And like I said at the beginning, you can do one office or you can do uh, uh, an office, uh, a building that has uh, 2,048 indoor units because that's the amount of units, indoor units that we can control. Each indoor unit can be a space, right? We also have ready hotel and in ready, give you two options. One is going to be for the multi-room building and the other one is going to be for the Right, and this uh, uh, ready comes with the logic already included that it's going to look at the occupancy of the space and if the logic either to go into a rented stage, a rent unoccupied or not being rented. Okay, and I will go more in detail about each one. And then I have the ready home. And in Ready Home, I'm also going to have two options. One is for that application where the house has a whole bunch of uh, smart devices like lightning, switches, uh, sensors, smoke sensor, etc. you name it. Uh, and the other option is just for the air conditioning, right? So one more complete, more robust, because it can create a smart home. And one is just going to be uh, just the air conditioning. And you, the less options that you have is going to be more economical, right? So you can integrate other equipment, right? Like like these devices, smart devices, or you can control even air hundred units that we can send and receive a digital input. We can control that and integrate to this, all right? So let me uh, stand a little bit more about the proto line, pro lineup. And uh, what we have here is the ready office on top. Then we have ready home and ready hotel. In the ready office, I'm going to have the option to uh, have the tablet, right? And this one is our flag model. W keep in mind, we keep all of these models in stock, okay? So whichever you need, we, we have it. So the first one, the ready office, touch, right? It comes with the tablet, right? If the customer doesn't want to have a tablet or he has a tablet or she has a um a, a cell phone that she wants to use it, we can give you the ready without the tablet. There is a difference in pricing here that if you have a, a project that is sensitive in price, you can go with this one and use the customer's tablet or cell phone, okay? Now, if you have a, a project where you have different applications, let's say, let's call it, not different applications, different sites. Let's say uh, a bank right? Banks usually have different subsidiaries around the country and each, each one of those uh, can have their own ready and then we can integrate all of those four, five, six radies into one, into the, the headquarters. We can do that through the internet and using this accessory that is called the multi-site, okay? And I will go more in detail as well. And then we have the rules. If you have, a, let's say, a, just to give you an example, with four, five, floors, seven floors, and each floor is a different tenant 
and each one wants to control their own air conditioning, I can give you a ready for each floor and then I can integrate all of those into one and be in control in the same building. Maybe the service person or the, or the owner of the whole building wants to have, be able to control the whole, the whole system. You can do it with the Ready Plus, okay? Then we have the Ready Home, and like I mentioned before, we have Ready Home for a smart house where you can connect all of these uh, smart devices, smart gadgets, right? And Ready Home Light. Keep in mind this, Ready Home Light is just for the air conditioning, okay? Now we got the Ready Hotel, and like I mentioned before, Ready Hotel, we have two options. We have the Ready Hotel for the multi-room building, right? And we have the Ready Villas, which are usually the, the little houses that are separate one from the other one. So we have a logic that is gonna be looking at uh, the occupancy of the space, and all they have to do in the recession is just send a signal that the a room or the villa is occupied, okay? A little bit about the nom nomenclature. Uh, it's going to start with a DCP, and what that is is Daikin Control Product. Uh, the fourth letter is going to be uh, what defines the control, right? So if we have an F there, it's because, because it's going to be for an office. If you have an H, it's going to be for a home. If you have an L, it's for hotel, R for resort, and A is the adapter that always comes with the ready, right? So it's kind of like... Um, let me go more in detail now. This is the... the is touch, touch screen, and it comes with the tablet. And you also have the option to see it on from your smartphone. Okay. Now, this control is comparable with VRV. We call it room air, but these are uh, mini splits. This is Daikin mini splits, right? Sky air packages and uh, heat reclaim units, ventilation. Sky air and mini splits, they have to be Daikin. Okay, the, we cannot control or third party uh, mini splits unless they are a smart units and we can control it just on, on and off with uh, digital input and digital output. Okay, so that's something that we need to look uh, very careful. And if you have an application like that, just let us know and we help you decide. Now, the total management points are going to be 500 points. Remember, I say this product is for a small medium-sized building because it has this limitation, 500 management points. What does this mean? It means that if I, if I have a, an air 100 unit and I want to control discharge temperature, return temperature, the BFD, the, the velocity of the fan, and uh, I want to control pressures through the filter, I got four management points there that I need to deduct from this 500, right? Now, on the other side, I'm going to be connecting VRV indoor units to this uh, controller, but each uh, VRV indoor unit is going to be count as one point. It doesn't matter if you're controlling uh, the, the wings or if you're controlling the fan speed or you're controlling the return temperature, it only going to count as one, right? So my limit or my maximum is going to be 500. Okay, I hope you guys understand that. Um, what can I control? I can control the air conditioning. I can monitor the air conditioning. I can change the set point range. I can prohibit the room control. I, I, I don't want anybody to change my set. Prohibit that. I have a setback. I have a schedule. And remember, important is the schedule. If you do uh, a non and off schedule, you are saving 30% on consumption of energy. Keep that in mind. You have an off timer, you have a sync control, and the sync control is interesting because uh, you can create uh, a specific parameter for, let's say, in the morning, you just want the indoor units uh, facing the east side to turn on, but you want the lights to be off, and you want on the west side of the indoor units, but the, the lights on, so that's like an kind of scene. So you can create different scenes. You can do inner locks, and the inner locks, I can integrate uh, third party equipment, let's say a fan, right? A mechanical fan. And if I'm reading uh, CO2s and, and the CO2 go too high, I can ask the third party fan to turn on and, you know, renew the air inside the space. I can have the automatic changeover. This is from hot to cold. I can have the layout view or the four inside a tablet, right? And locate the indoor units exactly where they go on the plan. Right. So I also have additional information like history, operational report, error reports. And this is important because 
it can be used as a service tool as well, right? Because what it's gonna do is that it's gonna send you emails or it's gonna send you an alert email telling you that the indoor unit in building C has a, an indoor unit that, that, that has an error, okay? So you have energy graphs, trends, uh, outdoor temperature graphs, uh, operational data, energy data, train data, emails, up to 10 emails, right? And you have the applications. A little bit about the connection diagram. This is my tablet, right? And my tablet comes with a board, uh, an adapter, right? Over here, I'm gonna come out in a connection on the back and I, and I will show you in the next slides how, how you disconnect it. This line is a Mobbus uh, line, R, R485, R, RS485, and I connect to my board. This board is installed inside the condenser, right? With this board, I can control 10, condensers or 10 systems. All right, keep in mind that we call system one condenser or two condensers together or three condensers together, right? Uh, in, a, in a pipe system, pretty much. So it can be one condenser, two condensers together, or three condensers. So I can have three systems connected here. I can have 64 indoor units, right? But if you need more capacity, we can stand to another board, which is gonna give you another 10 systems, another 64 indoor units. If you need more capacity, we have a second connection that we can connect the boards, another two more boards, right? So I have a maximum of four boards, 40 condensers, 256 indoor units that I can connect to the system. That's a, a pretty good size system. These are the options or the functions that we already talked. And it also has these two options available. When I say available, they have an additional charge. They're not included in the package, right? And one is the PPD, that which will allow you to the consumption of energy or each indoor unit and then generate a report that you can bring it to the tenant and tell them, hey, listen, this is what you consume in air conditioning. And also have the real-time energy monitoring, which is looking at the consumption energy every 20 minutes and generate some graphs that, that, that is pretty nice, right? You can connect to a multi-sensor, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about more about this because I like this sensor. You can connect to a smart meters to measure the consumption of energy, and over here, connecting to the router using the LAN line, right, the LAN, I can connect to WAGO, which I can connect or control lights, ventilation, sensors, etc. okay? Let's see a little more in detail. How's the connection? I got my my touch. I'm sorry, my ready touch. I have 200 meters from this point to the last uh, board, right? Again here, 200 meters for the second, the other two boards if I need it, right? I can use a twisted pair RS485 Mobbus line. That's 200 meters to here, right? And then the connection to my sensors. And keep in mind, I can have 30 sensors here. Okay, I'm gonna use the same cable, right? And again, for the smart meters, I can also connect 30 smart meters, right? On the same cable. Then on the other line, I'm gonna connect to LAN cable, and I'm gonna go to my WAGO, and I'm gonna use a Mobbus TCP IP LAN cable, okay? I can connect here 10 nodes. That means that I can have up to a thousand contacts that I can do with these guys. And also we have this board that uh, allow us to connect to mini splits, okay? Uh, let me finish with this one and then I will go to the chat, see if there is any question. This is the ready without the tablet, okay? Now this one also compatible with VRV, mini splits, SkyAir package and ventilation units. And remember a maximum of 500 points, okay? Management points, as you can see, it has less options than the the top, the the one with the tablet, and I'm gonna come back so you can see that it's less. You see, I have more options here than with without the tablet, but that doesn't mean that I cannot always additional at an additional. So we're just trying to give you a better solution, more economical solution, because sometimes. You don't need sync control or you don't need the automatic changeover, but in case that you need it, we can give it to you at additional cost. Okay. The connection diagram is the same two lines for Mobbus, four boards, uh, connection to the multi site, connection to the smart meters, and connection to 
uh, the, the WAGO so I can control the party equipment. In this case, the tablet is going to be provided by the customer. OK, or you can easily see it from the cell phone. All right, I'm going to make a stop here. I'm going to check the chat, see if there is any questions so far. Let's see chat. All right, anybody has a question? Anyone want to ask any, anything? Yes, Andres, Mark has his hand raised. Hey, Mark, how are you? Oh, hi, what's up? I was asking if these controllers can work without the neutral wire. Most of our buildings in Jamaica don't have the neutral wire, and I know I've tried to set up other smart switches and stuff like that, and the neutral wire was an issue. A dedicated neutral wire. Right. Um, that's gonna be on the smart side, right? On the on the. Let me let me get to that because we use Z-Wave for the uh, smart uh, equipment, and they usually require a neutral line, and that's because they always need to be power. Right? You don't want them to turn off. So perhaps we have to look more in detail of what solution we can provide for Jamaica. OK, we, we can look at it in another time. OK, right. Any, anybody has another question or should I continue? All right, let's continue then. Um, and I will I will show you which one are the ones that need the neutral line. This one, so you don't need neutral line. OK, because this one goes directly to Wago. They will not be they will not need that neutral line that you're asking. All right, now let's go into the multi uh, sensor, right? And this sensor is dedicated for the indoor air quality. Before we didn't have any of this, right? So this is why I'm getting excited about this product because this product can measure temperature, humidity, uh, PM 2.5, TVOC, which is the uh, total vol volatile organic compounds, and CO2. Right. So before where um, an application requires some type of humid humidity control, we didn't have that option. Now we can measure the humidity in the space. And if the humidity is too high, we can just do an integration to turn in the indoor unit and to go into the dry mode. Right. In that way, we can reduce the humidity in the space. Or if you have an application more precise with more precise humidity, we can integrate it electric heater or some other devices to control and reduce the, the humidity. We also didn't have the P.5, and what this is, is that it's going to measure the particles that are floating in the air that are 2.5 micrometers or bigger, right? And this, uh, these particles, you can breathe in and they can, you know, live in your lungs forever and whatever. I don't know what happens there. But what we're going to do is that we're going to measure that Right, and uh, these particles are like a hundred times smaller than your hair, just so you know. And uh, what we're doing here is that we have, and, and that will be another training for you guys. We have a cassette that has a filter at 2.5, which uh, we have done tests on uh, on, on, on some uh, rooms, and where we drop a smoke in there, and it cleans the room like in 15 minutes, right? Completely clean. So we 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 can do that with the with those filters. Uh, the TVOC are for gasoline, are for uh, what else? Um, I'm forgetting. Uh, smoke, uh, cooking, burning, oils, uh, paints, we can measure that. And the CO2, um, the way we can do is like, a, let's say, for example, we're in a school and uh, we have a range, uh, we make a, a range on the, pro, on the controller to measure uh the the ppms up to 2000 because uh, after 2000 the students can fall asleep uh, and if you reach that level i can ask to turn on the fan and change the air inside the space right so i can uh better the quality of air inside the space the maximum number of these controllers that i can have is 30 right and they are connected on the mob bus line we also have the wago 
I'm sorry, the smart meters, right? The smart meters and what this smart meter is going to do is that he is going to measure the consumption of energy of the condenser. And then with the uh, activation of the PPD, PPD, PPD data, we can aggregate the consumption of energy or the indoor units and then go to the customer and you tell them, hey, this is what you consume in energy. OK, so the only thing that you need here is the smart meter, the ready and the activation of the PPD. OK, and that's going to generate this nice report where you can bring it to the consumer and tell them, listen, this is what you consume in energy. In energy, you can select it by time period, by time zone. You can put the currency, the unit price, and you can give it a very detailed uh, report of what they're um, consuming. OK, uh, the real time energy. Uh, this is a, another activation that has a, an additional cost, but in this uh, option, you can see or you can uh, monitor the consumption energy, energy more precisely because it's giving you an answer or it's giving an update every 20 seconds. And it generates this nice graph that you can easily see what's their condition and what's lining, et cetera, okay? Uh, and also generate these graphs that it makes it easier for, for you to understand. And this is this don't this one don't generate a report. They just show for you to uh, get, gather information and monitor. Sometimes people tend to change the settings on indoor units, so you can catch who's doing uh, the the changes on what indoor units. Okay, uh, this is the again a little more information on the connection. This is the pro the ready. You're gonna see the point of connection to the boards, right? Remember. One, only one board comes with a controller and you can control 10 systems here, 64 indoor units. And these other three are, if you need more capacity, we can sell you just the boards, okay? And they're connected to this uh, point of connection right here. You got connection to the landline and from here from the router, you connect to the WAGO and WAGO has digital inputs, digital outputs, analog, analog inputs, analog outputs that you can control uh, third party devices. Uh, we have the software that is going to be here in the slot right there. Then you have connect to the IEQ multi sensor. Remember, we can connect 30, right? And you have to the smart meters that you can also connect 30 to this. OK, just so keep keep in mind that number. Are there any other questions so far? Let me check. Total value organic, okay. Okay, uh, Ezequiel Martinez is asking, as far as I understood, I can use the, I can use with an optional PPD with DCPF01. Yes, Ezequiel, you need to buy actually the PPD activation in order to use it with the DCPF01, which is the office. Okay, all right. Any other question? Anybody? No? OK, let's continue. Now, this one is the Ready Plus. And um, to explain Ready Plus, I'm going to give you an example. We have a eight-story building here, and each tenant or each floor has a different tenant. And each tenant wants to control their own air conditioning. They don't want to see the second floor or their floor, right? So what we do is that we gave him a ready office to each one, which is this one's right here. So we're going to have eight because this is an eight floor, right? And then let's say that the owner of the building wants to be able to see all of them into one computer or one laptop. So we can offer the ready plus, which is this guy, and we can connect it to the line line, line line, right? And be able to see it here, right? In this way, we can connect up to A, that's why I say eight floors, right? Because each one of these can control up to 10 systems, 64 indoor units, right? So I can have 320 systems, right? And a maximum of 2048 indoor units. This is a very large project. So it's kind of taking the medium and a little more size buildings, okay? Now we also have the multi-site, and this is interesting as well because uh, let's pretend this is a, a bank right here, 
located in, in the west side of the of the country and this is another bank located in the center of the city and this is another bank located in, by the beach right so each one of those is going to have a ready office you can control air conditioning you can control air quality uh, consumption of energy and third party equipment right and all of them we can integrate it to a multi-site which is located in headquarters in Chicago, right? So all of those can be monitored and controlled from the head office, the headquarters. The maximum of these branches that I can have is 400, right? So it is a very, it has a large capacity. So remember, I can have 400 of these branches, all right? And all of them control from a headquarters, all right? Now let's go into ready home and in ready home. Remember that we're going to have two options. One is going to be for the smart home, right? Which is this one that I'm showing you right here. It doesn't come with the tablet. It just controlled by your cell phone. Or if you, the customer has a tablet, it can control it by your own tablet. It controls VRB, mini please, sky air, packages, ventilation. And right here, the total management points change to 100, okay? Now we can control and monitor on and off, schedule, timer, scene control, inner lock, icon view, lock history, train graph, energy graph, export the data. And this is the more important to have your own application where you can go into you know, the, the app stores and download the application. So it uses Z-Way as a way to communicate to a smart uh, uh, equipment like lights and and locks and, and all of that. It, the communication is Mobbus and you can talk to the controller because it, it is allowed to uh, communicate to Google Home and Google Alexa. All right. Here you can see the communication diagram. Again, you're just going to connect to one board. That board is connected to the condenser. And over here, you're going to have one system only, right? One board, I'm sorry, up to 10 condensers or 10 systems and 64 indoor units. Right, this is a big house, 64 indoor units. You got the, uh, the options that you have, and these are additional that if uh, the customer wants to have additional, we can sell you this. Now, the connection to the Z-Way devices, uh, we're gonna provide the dongle, and you can connect to lights, right, to turn on and off lights from the application, the, la the locks from the, the door, the curtain, you got smart plug, and sensors, you got a sensor like a smoke detectors, motion detectors, flood detectors, so you can uh, connect to them. These are the devices that need a neutral line, the, the, the engineer from Jamaica was asking. Uh, you can also have the connection to, uh, the, to be able to measure the consumption of energy through a smart meter, and you also have the, the IAQ for uh, the multi-sensor, right? For to better the quality of air in the space. You can connect to cameras, up to eight cameras. You can display on your cell phone and we can connect to uh, mini splits. Now, this is the home light, right? This is the, the smart house, right? Smart home. And this is the light. And the light is going to be more economical because you only have 30 management points and only control air conditioning. Okay, we're not controlling anything else, just the air conditioning, right? So, and you have less options, control, on, off, schedule, timer, icon view, login, login history, and you option for the apps, all right? Uh, this is the diagram, connection to the board, the board connected to the condensers, and then just the air conditioning, right? Up to five condensers, five systems, 30 condensers, okay? Uh, yeah, let me finish on this. Uh, we got two applications. One is for the room. The other one is for the room. You can download these applications from the App Store, right, or the Google Play. And I'm going to give you, uh, right here on top, you can see the QRs that you can download these uh, demos, right? One demo is for Ready Home, and the other demo is for Ready Office. You, uh, it's going to ask you for the user. Um, use one of these, either user one, two, or three, 
and then the password uh, ready users. And it's gonna throw you into this page where you're gonna have different options here on the bottom. I want you to play with it. You can go into the indoor units and play with the indoor units, or you can go into trend graphs, energy management. You can create reports, the PPD, the billing to, to generate the report. You can do schedules, interlock, scenes, et cetera. So it's very interesting. Uh, this presentation is gonna be recorded or is being recorded so you can come back here and see this uh, slide again and, and get this QR, okay? Uh, any questions so far? Let me go back here to... Okay, so yeah, are you got any image about the results are shown? Um, Ezekiel, you, you're talking about PPD, right? Continue talking about PPD? Yes. Okay. Uh, what the, the only uh, resource, it looks like the SBM, because this is the second generation of the SBM, uh, but uh, I will invite you to visit this uh, app, right? Download this app. And going here where it says PPD, PPD billing, so you can see how it looks. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Anybody want to talk? Open the microphone and talk. No? Okay, let's continue then. All right, let's go into. I have I have one question for you. Yes, go ahead. So Jason from Barbados. Does, does these new controllers work with the older evaporators, like the older system? It's the same VRV, but the older ones. Yes. Because we have like a hotel that we have a hotel that was built in like 20, to 2007, around those times. Okay. Yes. Uh, let me go back here so you understand what what the control does. Right here. right here, this mm -hmm. side is, let's call it the Japanese side, which is D3Net, right? This okay. communication between these two is D3Net. This board is installed in this condenser and mm -hmm. he's pulling that information oh. from the D3Net. Yeah. So whatever yes. you have connected here on this side, he is going to read it and he is going to send it to the control via Mobbus. Okay. Okay. I guess we get you know. Now, if you have third party equipment and you connect it to Wago, remember we have up to a thousand points here. Up to thousand I'm gonna points. send it back here and you can read it here. Right. right. Okay. I got you. All right. To here. Anybody any other question? Okay, let's continue. Now let's go into Ready Hotel. And remember, in Ready Hotel, I'm gonna have two options. One is gonna be for the multi-room, a hotel like you see here, that multi-room. And the second one is gonna be for a villa, which are usually the little houses that are separate one from each other. So in this case, I'm gonna control VRV, uh, Minis Please, Sky Air, and um, Package. And each one of these guys can control up to 10 uh, digital inputs and digital outputs. What does that mean? It means that uh, this control is the same one that I'm talking about. You can receive 10 uh, signals from a car reader, right? Or from a window sensor or from a motion sensor. So if you have like in this example, you have a room here, second room, third room, and each one of these can have two, three, that's, that's kind of standard what they have, two or three. So you can do three to 10 rooms with just one controller, okay? He is gonna send this information through the LAN cable to the ready office, and then we can see it in the ready, right? And all the, uh, the people do at the hotel is just to send a signal from here that the room, that this room, is in a rented uh, condition, okay? So we can do the, the the remote controller prohibition, say bye, automatic changeover, guesser conditioning, interlock, and email alert. So there is a logic inside this program that is gonna, um, depending on 
the information that I receive from the dry contents is going to position there. And like I said, the only thing the person from the recession is going to do is going to press this and that's going to put the room into uh, rented condition, right? The same thing for the villas. We're also going to have the same application where the concierge come and press that. And in this case, you're going to have one of these ones, which also have 10 digital inputs, 10 digital outputs, right, that you can receive. And from that position or from that information, I can tell if there is somebody in the room or not. All right. So basically, what these guys do, they don't know anything about our condition and they just go into the application, they just send the, the signal and based on the previous programming uh, or the previous logic that we already have for the hotels, the, the, the indoor units are gonna take priority in to cool the space before the customer gets into the room, right? So it's gonna go into a rented setting or if uh, the customer uh, let's say that we have two sensors in there. We have a door sensor and we have a, a, a motion sensor, right? If the user goes to grab some ice and he takes the car, but there is somebody in the space and the motion sensor sensor that somebody's in there, well, it's going to keep the set point. But if both of the person leave the room and they take the car, well, the, the room is going to go into an unrented setting and it's going to raise up the, the set point. This is all programmable, right? And... Um, let me show you. It's all programmable from this other screen. As you can see, this is room 301, and you can do all of this programming depending of what you want the units to do. If you want the window to open and to turn off the indoor unit, you can just program that here. Now, this is done by uh, probably not the concierge, this programming, not, not the reception guy. It's done by the service guy or the person in charge of the air conditioning. Okay. Uh, any question about the Ready Hotel or Ready Villa? Let's check. Uh, yes, because I have a project where SBN was okay. I have to replace. Uh, so very similar to the end users. Yes, the ready is 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 the better option or the better SBM because it's the second generation. So we gather all the the feedback and we empower this new controller to make it better. Okay. Uh, anybody has a question about Ready Hotel? No. Okay. Let's continue then. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So, well, many of you probably know what the iTouch Manager is, right? Um, the iTouch Manager is a more robots controller, a Daikin controller. Um, there is no much development on the iTouch Manager right now uh, because all of the investment is being on the ready. But we want to make this integration easily, right? Because sometimes you want to control whatever is connected to the iTouch Manager on the cell phone, right? This is this is what's popular now, control it from your cell phone. So in that case, we offer the uh, the ready and it connects to the cell phone you can do it from here but you will need a global ip which is very expensive and a monthly fit right to the internet company and uh, there are not that many ips out there so it will be very expensive for you uh, we keep this guy because this guy connects to bagnet right he can be the client the bagnet client that means that i can control other equipment that has bagnet and I, let's say I have an 800 unit that communicates to Bagnet, I can control it from here, and then I can pass it to the ready and control that through for, from my cell phone, okay? Also, with the iTouch manager and the PPD, which is the, to measure the consumption of energy, uh, we need the activation kit, right, to generate that report. But that doesn't give you a nice report that you can bring to the customer. We will need ready, to generate that, right? So in that case, uh, you will need the iTouch, the PPD, and the ready. If you haven't activated the PPD, we can just give you the, and this activation code that will generate the report, or the scenario three, where is don't use the iTouch manager, because it's, uh, it's a little more expensive, by the way, this is probably half of the price of the iTouch manager, and we just do the whole solution with the ready, okay? 
So this is the, if it, if for some reason you already have an iTouch manager and you already have the PPD activated, you use the scenario one or two. And if you don't have any of those, you can use the ready. In this case, you will need just the ready, the, the smart meters and the activation key for the PPD. Okay, any questions about this? Let me check. Let me check. Can you just touch on these smart meters again? Yeah, the, the smart meters are going to be, let me go back so you understand what I'm saying. Mm. Not right here. Okay. If you have an application where, let's say it's a, a commercial building, right? And you got different tenants in the building. You have the, you know, the store that sells shoes. You have the uh, barber. You have, uh, you know, fast food, whatever, on the same shop. And you want to be able to uh, generate a report to tell these guys, to tell each tenant what they consume on, on, consume on energy. We will need... Uh, a smart meter to measure the total consumption of the condenser, right? Now, we're going to activate the PPD uh, activation key into the ready, and what that's going to do is that it's going to be looking at the position of the expansion valve or each in the unit and the time that the valve is being opened, right? So the more you open the valve, the more weight is going to put on the on the indoor unit so you know that you're consuming more energy this is the the easiest way to uh, find out how much each indoor unit is consuming because uh, some what they do is that they use the meter cube or meter yeah meter cube to find out what's uh, the consumption but it's not precise in this case we're looking uh, the position of the valve and then with the logic that we have included with the activation we generate this report that you can bring it to the tenant and tell him hey listen this is what you consume that's the total based on the currency or the local currency because you can put your the the amount of your kilowatt okay do you understand yes thank you okay all right so that's what we do with the Right here. Okay, let me check the chat. Okay, ITM plus ready can be good solution if we have more than four D3 buses. Okay, can you open your microphone and explain this to me? I didn't understand that. Ezekiel. Yes, I and I want to ask if we have a product with more than four D3 buses, that is more than 40 system, VRB system, maybe it's a good, good solution to install an iTouch manager mass IT, ITM plus adapter plus one ready. Right? I understood correctly. We're still talking about the the plot the ppd or i don't they understand no just in a in a project where we have uh, many indoor units mm -hmm. and outdoor unit uh, I, I i suppose that one the the improve of the eye touch manager is that it's bigger so to to the end user is easy to use a big screen that that small one but to have the powerful of the ready, we could combine the touch manager and ready, and it is a good solution when you have a lot of indoor units. Let's, let's say more than a four D3 bus, correct? Yes. Honestly, I'm going to be very clear. Uh, the the ready is taking over the iTouch manager 
because they, they can do up to 2048 indoor units, 2048 indoor units. That's a little more than the iTouch manager. But the iTouch manager is still a good option if you're going to use BagNet, if you're going to use it as a, as a BagNet client, right? And in BagNet client, which is another language, by the way, the ready is Mobbus and iTouch manager connects to BagNet. And there's two different uh, softwares or two, two communications, but uh, the main difference right now that I see goes through the BagNet side, that you can control those equipment from uh, the controller. Also, it, the, the iTouch manager is, is a, it's a bigger screen, you may say that, but you can also look at it from your computer. You can go in through the IP address or the iTouch manager and control it. But the same way you can do with the ready. And, uh, and ready is more economical than the iTouch manager. So uh, I'm, I'm putting a lot of pluses to the ready, right? More than the iTouch manager. And that's also because all the investment right now is going into the ready and not into the iTouch manager. But they, they both pretty much do the okay. same thing. Okay, okay. Okay. Understood. Thank you. We, we can talk later, Ezekiel, and, and see if we can, we can okay, understand. Thank better. you. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right, let's continue. Now, we have a software that is going to help us, the VRB Express is going to help us do a right selection. Right here, I'm showing you um, a, one system connect it or put it inside this building, right? And I move the ready, ready, I drag it and drop it here, and it's selected here. So it's one ready office and one adapter, right? This is the standard, it's selected by, by itself. Now, on this corner, I'm gonna have the ready resort, the ready office, the ready touch, the ready home light, and the ready smart. And at the end, what you're gonna get is a report that is going to tell you that you selected the ready controller and the adapter and this is what basically what you guys send to our sales team or sales engineer and they are very well trained on this software and on the um, on the controllers that if you guys need any any additional assistance you can guide, you can go through them and they'll be able to uh, support you and help you with anything you need including pricing okay uh, let's see uh, this is a little bit of a how a whole connection look. We got the radio office connected to the system, right? And then you have the tablet. Uh, I'm sorry, this is from the Fred Harry Hotel. You got the radio office connected the board to the condenser. And then we have VRB, we have Sky Air, we have the old Sky Air, which we're going to use a board to connect to the D3 net. We got uh, mini splits and the mini splits with the Wi Fi. But what's interesting here is that you don't need to have VRV to connect all of this equipment, right? So it's not necessary to have VRV, all right? All right. Now, this is, uh, I'm getting close to my, to the end, actually, this is the slide, the last slide, and uh, I just want to refresh a little bit what I talked. We have three uh, options. One is the radio office. Right, and in radio office, we got different options. We got the touch, right, that comes with the tablet. The radio office without the tablet is a more economical solution. Then you have the multi site. Remember the sample of the banks, right? You have different banks in the country, so you can integrate all of them. And the ready plus, which is like the building, and every building has a different owner or a different tenant, and they just want to control their air conditioning, but then the whole building wants to be in just one control, so we can include all of those in here. Ready home, we got the ready home for smart home, we can, which you can integrate smart devices. The ready home light, only air conditioning, right? And then we got ready hotel and ready resort, right? Remember that each one of these can connect up to 10 digital inputs or outputs, okay? And with that, we have a logic that is gonna help us uh, identify if somebody is in the room or not. OK, with that, I conclude my presentation. I just want to, you know, again, create the conscience of uh, the energy consumption that keeps increasing, increasing every year. And if we don't do anything, uh, we're not going to uh, secure any 
future to our kids, right? And the solution that I'm giving you is not going to solve that problem, but it is going to reduce the consumption of energy by 30%, and it's a way, way too, too cheap to not consider, right? It's only one fifth of the cost of a BMS. So that means that this, this uh, savings will pay for the control itself. And then, like I say, even if you don't consider Daikin, please consider uh, any type of centralized controller so we can you know, secure the future of our kids. Uh, with that, I conclude. I don't know if you have more questions. I will check the chat here. Uh, I don't see anybody. I don't see any other question. Anybody want to open the microphone and, and say anything? Yeah, Daniel, eh, Daniel. Eh, Andres is Gustavo Perez. I'm the regional sales engineer for Daikin. Andres, thank you for all the support. And everybody that uh, enjoyed today, uh, thank you to, to be with us. Um, um, as Andres indicates, it's an opportunity to have open questions. Uh, we are trying to work in and, in, and uh, try to uh, establish a better uh, communication with all family, all of the Daikin family. So let us know if you guys have any question. Let us know if you guys need a specific webinar uh, or a specific explanation about BRB or even about applied. Fantastic. We am, am more happy to support that and, and thank you. Okay. I got a question from David Saldarriaga. Not possible to connect to other manufacturers or than Daikin. Uh, if you're talking about BRF, no. If you're talking to about equipment like uh, a mini split or a package that are not considered smart, we may connect to those, but uh, we got to see the type of indoor unit because it, it may turn on and off or just turn it on, right? Or just turn it off. So we got to look in detail uh, the type of unit that you want to control. But if it's another, another manufactured BRF, um, no, we will not be able to control those. Okay. All right. All right, anybody else? Well, if you have any question or if something comes up in the future, you can email me or you can email the sales engineer. They, they'd be happy to help you. Now, like I said at the beginning, we're going to do a little game. It's called uh, Kahoot, right? And what it's going to do is that I'm going to send you a link. Let me see. Where is it? Give me one second here. Let me move this to the other side. OK. And what you guys going to do is that you're going to go in your cell phone or on your uh, computer, scan this. Um, let me see. Let me copy to share here too. Scan it and open it in your cell phone. And I'm going to ask you or there's going to show you questions and you're going to have 20 seconds to answer the question. Okay. Once um, you're going to be, uh, give, they're going to give you points and it's going to rank you in a podium. And at the end, the winner is going to get a, a gift certificate from Daikin. Um, what else? What, what else can I tell you? Um, Look at your cell phone. I think it gives you uh, colors on your cell phone. I don't know if uh, the question is going to be on my computer, but you got 20 seconds to answer. OK, so try to be quick on that. All right, we got 32 people, so let's, let's just wait until many more people connect. That's seven. Come on, let's get more people here. Come on, guys. Anymore. Come on, tell me if you're having problems or anything. All right, two more minutes and then we start because I don't want to go over the time.
One more minute. One more minute. It's fun, believe me. It's gonna be fun. I will give you guys 5% discount in the next order. This is Gustavo Perez. Okay. All right, let, let's begin. Okay, get ready. Here comes the first question. What are the ready options? Remember, I mentioned that there were some options that we were specifically designed for those options. All right, yes, ready home, ready office, and ready hotel. Nine people got it right. Good job, guys. Now let's see the score. Let's see who's leading. All right, Eddie. Eddie is leading the board. We got Rajan Davis. Here we go. Next question. Get ready. How many dry contacts can I connect to Ready Hotel? Remember, Ready Hotel. How many digital inputs and digital outputs I can connect? Come on, be quick. You want to be on the board the podium all right got 11 people got it right okay the correct answer is 10 digital inputs and outputs all right good job let's see who's leading now raja good job raja all right let's go for third question how many sites how many banks remember can i integrate with the ready multi-site Remember that? How many? The total. Total. The maximum total. How many banks? How many fast foods? How many stores? Six people got it right. It's 400 sites. 400 sites. So let's see how this board is looking. The scoreboard. All right, Raja keeps up. Keeps leading. All right, let's see what's next. David has three highest answers. Three straight or three. Let's go. Question number four. Ready Home has the ability to control what? Ready Home. Home Light, I'm sorry. Home Light has the ability to control what? That's an easy one. Ready Home Light. That's correct, air conditioning only. So this is a, a more economical solution, right? The other one controls smart devices. This one just air conditioning, okay? Okay, let's go for question number. Oh, hold on. Oh, good job, Davis. You went up. Oh, Raja's third now. Brandon, you're catching up, man. Let's go. Number five. What's, what is the maximum number of smart meters I can connect to the ready? The maximum number of smart meters, remember, smart meters. How many can I connect? That's to measure the power consumption of the condenser and then segregate it to each indoor unit. All right, you got seven people right. The answer, I'm sorry, two people, right? The answer is 30 smart meters, 30 smart meters. All right, let's see the board now. All right, Sergio's going up. Come on, let's go for the next one. Number six, what does the indoor air quality sensor measure? Remember we talked about that I like this sensor because we didn't have it before. What does that measure? That's an easy one. Okay. All right, seven people got it right. So it measures temperature, TVOC, relative humidity, COP, CO2 sensories, and PM2.5. All right, let's see the scoreboard now. Oh, Davis, still there, man, hanging on. All right, let's go. Next question. 
How many management points can I control with ready office? How many management points? Remember, I have the limitation. How many points can I control with ready office? All right, these people got it right. 500 management points. Let's see the board. Oh, come on, you guys got to catch up with Davis. Ready. Remember that it comes with one, but then you can expand the two. Remember that? Counts with one standard, and then you can expand it to just ready office. Spend it four times. Four times. All right. All right. And Davis is leaving. He's leaving you behind, guys. Oh, come on. This is getting better. All right. Two more questions. Ready plus can connect up to a maximum of how many adapter? Ready plus. Ready plus, remember the, the building with each different tenant. So, yeah, that's correct. Eight, eight boards, eight boards. All right. Oh, Roger's back on, on top. Good job. Now, last question, guys. Last question. Here we go. What's necessary to use PPD option with ready? What do you need to use PPD with ready? The measure of consumption of energy, remember. What do you need? We ready. All right, you need the smart meter and the PPD activation. That's correct. All right, let's see the podium. There, Sergio, number three position. Second position, H7. And in first position, Joe Rick. Oh, that's a great comeback. Congratulations. Joe Rick, send me a, an email so we can coordinate the, the gift certificate. All right. All right, that, that's it, guys. That's, that's the whole presentation. I hope you uh, had enjoyed it. Uh, I don't know. If you have any questions, just please feel free to to open the microphone and talk to me. Now we just finished today. All right. So, any any question, anybody? No. All right. Well, thank you for your time and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.